Hi there everyone, welcome again to Prehistoric Park. This is your Daily Dose Weekend Edition of the Calgary Zoo. My name is Jen and I am a proud part of the education team here. Today we're talking about the fossil record and how easy or hard it is to become a part of it. You may remember the first time I spoke with you, I decided to become a paleontologist in grade 2 and my little brother decided he wanted to become a fossil. So let's dig in and figure out whether or not he could become a fossil. So a fossil is the remains or trace of ancient life. The oldest fossils are 3.5 billion years old from Australia, stromatolites, these big mounds of mats of bacteria trapped by rock. The youngest fossils are about 10,000 years old. So you need to be 10,000 years old in order to become a fossil. The fossil record is this epic book that tells the story of life on Earth. But this story is missing a lot of pages. We've got the, the main plot points, we've got some of the major characters, but there are so many places missing, but we're missing quite a few of the characters. We can make out trends, we can make out, make some good analysis of the fossil record, but there are some pieces missing. So let's talk about why the fossil record is so incomplete. So there are about 250,000 fossil species known. Scientists estimate that that's only like 5% of the living things that have existed. So it's pretty lucky and pretty rare to become a fossil. There are some sort of general rules of what fossilizes better than, than other things. In general, hard parts will fossilize better than soft parts. If you live, or more importantly, if you die and are buried in an aquatic environment, so a water environment, you're more likely to fossilize than in a terrestrial or land environment. And if you are common or widespread, you're more likely to fossilize and be found in the fossil record than if you're rare or endangered. So we're going to take a look at some of uh, some species that are alive today. We'll make some hypotheses on whether or not future paleontologists in let's say a million years or so will find these in the fossil record. So let's take a look. We'll start here with a magpie. Beautiful, beautiful magpie. Big fan of these birds. Very common. We see them around our neighborhoods. What you'll notice, they are terrestrial, so they live on land, um, in, the, in the sky on land. They're, they would probably, when they die, they would get buried on land. Um, so they're common. That's one good thing for them to become a fossil. Terrestrial is not as good, so they're probably not going to fossilize. The other thing about about dinosaur bird bones, about avian dinosaur bones, is uh, that they're really fragile. So when when this when this bird dies, its bones are likely to break up. So probably not that likely to become a fossil. If we look at the hawksbill turtle here, um, really a lot of cool hard parts. So this shell is all really hard. It is a marine organism, so it lives in the water. So those are two great things that are going to help it get fossilized but these turtles are critically endangered. There are not a lot of them left on this planet. So again, that's probably a strike against them. Probably not gonna fossilize very well. And then we turn to corals. So corals are lots of hard parts. They're little polyps, little soft part animals that live inside the, each of the, uh, the pores in here. But the hard part here, the, the coral skeleton, really gonna fossilize well, lives in a marine environment, gonna get buried really quickly, gonna, gonna um, become a fossil really easily. Quite widespread, although we're losing some, some coral reefs. But I think this is our best chance at becoming a fossil. So you'll find that in the fossil record, there are a lot of marine hard part organisms in the fossil record. So as we can tell from these animals, there are, there are a lot of animals that might fossilize, a lot of plants that might fossilize or might not fossilize. So with those rules for fossil preservation in mind, for your take home activity today, on your next nature walk, I'd like you to take a look at some of the living things that you encounter in your neighborhood and think about whether they might fossilize or not fossilize. But before you go, I want to share an amazing exception to these rules. So this is Archaeopteryx, one of my favorite fossils. It is an avian dinosaur from Germany, and it comes from these, these areas where exceptional preservation takes place. They're called Konservat Lagerstätten. Um, which in German means basically fossil mother load. This is from Solenhofen limestone. Again, in the comments, if you want to talk about my uh, German, please let me know. Um, 145 million years old and uh, it's got soft parts preserved. So it is a beautiful fossil, beautiful preservation and exception to these rules. And there are some of these other windows into organisms that would not normally fossilize throughout the geologic time period and throughout the fossil record. So now you know that it is a very lucky thing to become a fossil even with these exceptions included. So in about 10,000 years, we can check to see if my brother has been successful. Um, I want to thank you for watching and thank you for supporting wildlife conservation.